In this video today, we're going to be taking a look at my top 20 picks for the all-time best comic books of the 1990s. This is happening right now, coming at ya. Hey everyone, Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Earlier in my YouTube days, I did a top 10 best comic books of the 1990s video and it was like really, really early in my YouTube days. It's actually still on the channel right now if you check it out. It's a really, really poor video quality, but um, I really wanted to go back and redo that uh, video, not only because I wanted to update it, but also because uh, in the past while we've been doing the uh, top 20 best comic books from each time period and I really wanted to go back and add some more comic books to uh, the 1990s era. If you've seen that old video on the channel, this is going to be a completely different video. I didn't even consult that old video to make this one. Now, mind you, there will be some of the picks from that old video that will be appearing in this video, but overall this is going to be completely different. Some of the ordering uh, probably will have changed as well. If you've been watching some of the top 20 lists on the channel for a while now, you'll know that my picks are pretty much solely based on cultural significance and cultural impact that the particular books had in their era. So these books today are not ordered based on the best art value or the best story or even the highest value as a collectible. These are based on cultural significance. In fact, some of the books that you're going to be seeing on this list today are terrible books. They might have bad art or bad story, but for some reason they caught on in the 1990s and that's why they're on the list today. Yeah, the 90s was really kind of weird like that. A lot of crap was being produced and a lot of crap sold really, really well in the 90s, but I do not want to undersell or undercut the 90s as an era in comic books by any means. I love the 90s and there was a lot of good stuff you can find from that era. So with that all out of the way, let's get into this list with our first book coming in at number 20, Sleepwalker number one. This is a new character that actually debuted in the 1990s and uh, it was published by Marvel. The title actually sold really well. Uh, this is actually a pretty good book. I actually have it in my collection. I have uh, the whole run and it's, and it's really, really good. Our next book, we have the New Warriors number one. This is also published by Marvel Comics and it's about a teenaged team of superheroes see Nova in here. Nova's actually a really cool character. I really personally like Nova. But uh, teenage superheroes and teenage teams of superheroes were actually pretty, pretty hot in the 1990s, especially with the success of the New Mutants and the Teen Titans. So Marvel was really trying to capitalize on their previous success and the success of DC. In our number 18 spot, we have Harbinger number one, which is published by Valiant Comics. And Valiant is a company that uh, emerged in the 1990s as uh, an independent comic book publisher along with Image Comics. And they actually put out quite a bit of uh, good stuff. I don't think they were as successful as uh, Image Comics. Uh, however, they did put out a lot of great stuff. Harbinger number one is one of the books that I feel is a success for Valiant Comics. And this book I feel is really kind of underrated and not really known to a lot of comic book collectors, especially new ones. I know I personally did not discover this book until about a year ago. A subscriber actually uh, recommended it to me and I thought it was great. But when I did a little bit of more research, uh, I realized that this book actually has quite, quite a bit of a fan following and that's why I have decided to include it on this list. Wildcats number one, published by Image Comics. And this book here was a huge success in the 1990s because this was the first time that we got to see Jim Lee with total creative freedom. So this is the first creator-owned title that Jim Lee published with Image Comics, and uh, it did really, really well. The art was really nice, didn't really care too much for the story, but uh, because it was Jim Lee working on this book, fans just ate it up. For all the viewers and subscribers out there who have called me out for not giving Alex Ross enough love on this channel, I agree with you. I have not talked enough about Alex Ross on this channel or in other videos. So in our number 15 spot, we have Kingdom Come by Alex Ross. This series here is definitely one of those that not only happens to be iconic, but also a very, very good read. The art is absolutely jaw-dropping and the story is great. I really liked it. At times I found it a little, the art a little busy. I'm not really a huge fan of so much going on in a particular panel. Like I'm also not a huge George Perez 
fan for the reason that it's just so much stimulation, so much to look at on a page and on a panel. But overall, I feel Alex Ross did an absolute stellar job with this title, and it will be read and remembered for years to come. And in our number 14, we have yet another Alex Ross series. This would be Marvels. And again, absolute stunning art by Alex Ross and also a very, very good read. I'm specifically talking about um, the first issue in Marvels, which is this one here. And this is actually a, a uh, homage cover to the first issue of Marvel Comics that came out all the way back in the 1930s. I, I actually absolutely love when artists do homage covers and they kind of swipe old covers from the golden age of comics. I, it just gives me chills. Venom, the lethal protector, number one. Anything with Venom on it in the 1990s sold very, very well. Venom is one of those hot villains of the 1990s and he just exploded in popularity ever since he first debuted in Amazing Spider-Man number 300. And the reason why that's not on the list is because Amazing Spider-Man 300 did not actually come out in the 1990s, it came out in the 1980s. If I remember correctly, I believe it was 1987. And Venom was pretty much popular from day one all the way up to even present day. Now, you could definitely tell that Marvel Comics was trying to capitalize a lot with the success of Venom with this book, but I have to say, this book actually was really, really good. I really enjoyed Venom the Lethal Protector. I think it was it's like a six issue uh, run, but it's totally worth picking up if you haven't read it. I, I really, really enjoy it and it's an essential for any Venom fan and really an essential for any 1990s comic book collection. Coming in at number 12, we have Batman, Vengeance of Bane, number one. Darn do I love this book. It is one of my favorite books from the 1990s. Such a good, solid read. And not only that, it is also the first appearance of the beloved Bane villain from Batman. Batman is actually one of those series that stayed consistently good through the 1990s. I know DC tried to do some gimmicks with Batman 2 in the 1990s. I don't think I've ever read any Batman stories from the 1990s that I disliked. Um, Batman, I, I, I personally think you just can't ever really go wrong with Batman. I mean, some of the Silver Age stuff from Batman I, I don't really like, but from literally 1970s all the way through to present day, Batman has been awesome and I am never bored reading a Batman book. Youngblood number one. Yes, I am being serious. This is on the list. And this is one of those books that is useless with respect to story and useless with respect to art. It is by Rob Liefeld, who is a very polarizing figure in the comic book industry. Uh, and the only reason why I did include this particular book on the list is because it is the very first comic book that Image Comics ever published. Despite it being really bad, it actually sold really, really well just because Rob Liefeld's name was on it. And he was very, very popular in the, uh, in the early 1990s. We are now down to our top 10 with our number 10 book, Batman Adventures number 12. And if you don't know, this is the first appearance of Harley Quinn. And of course, Harley Quinn is a really, really popular character, even to this day. Um, this also happens to be one of the most collectible, one of the most valuable books coming out of the 1990s. I know I mentioned I wasn't a huge George Perez fan, but I actually do like a lot of the books that he's worked on, except for maybe Crisis on Infinite Earths. That book just gives me a headache. But my favorite book that George Perez has ever worked on, and I don't even believe he actually finished working on it, was Infinity Gauntlet. And Infinity Gauntlet is an amazing book. It wasn't only super popular in the 1990s, but it actually was really, really good. And to this day, Infinity Gauntlet is super popular. I mean, heck, we have Avengers movies that are, are about a lot of things and themes that are, are dealt with in Infinity Gauntlet. Super great. If you don't want to pick up the original issues, pick up the trade or read it online. It is definitely worth the read. Our next book is Amazing Spider-Man number 361, which is the first appearance of Carnage. Carnage is kind of like one of those characters um, that is very similar to Venom in some ways. And I really feel that Marvel was trying to capitalize on the success of Venom even further with this character. But the first run that Carnage appears in is actually really enjoyable and really, really good. And I highly suggest reading it. It was not only popular, but it was also a very, very good Amazing Spider-Man read. Spawn number one. Image, I'm not going to lie, put out a lot of crap in the 1990s. But Spawn was not crap by any means. I actually really 
really enjoy Spawn. It is such a great story. You really see Todd McFarlane coming into his own as a writer with Spawn. Now, he's not like the best writer of all time, but the, the stories and the art in Spawn are just really, really great, very enjoyable, and I highly recommend picking them up. X-Force number one, another Rob Liefeld book. And I have to say, the art in this book is not good, and neither is the story. I did not enjoy this at all. But the reason why I included X-Force number one on this list and so high on this list is because this book was just so super stupid hot in the 1990s. It sold really, really well. It's estimated that uh, about 5 million copies of this book were sold. Now, that does not mean that 5, 5 million individual people actually read this book. I think, I think the reason why the sales were so high is because at this time, comic book speculation was really high and people were buying multiple, multiple copies of books thinking that they were going to be able to sell them and get rich off of them. And also that figure does not account for unsold copies of these books in comic book shops. And you're probably saying, wait, this doesn't make sense. You said this book sold 5 million copies. Well, without getting into the business of comic book distribution too much, the distributors sold and moved 5 million units of this particular book, but that does not mean that the actual comic book shops sold that many. And that might be a topic for another video. New Mutants number 98. Holy crap, it is another Rob Liefeld book. But New Mutants 98 is the book that introduced us to one of the hottest characters on Marvel's roster, and that would be Deadpool. I actually have this issue and I've read it, and I have to say it was a little bit of a letdown because when I actually got this issue, I was so excited to have New Mutants 98, but then I read it and I was like, what? What? I was, I didn't find the story or the art even to be anything special. But at the end of the day, this is a piece of pop cultural history and a very, very iconic comic from the 1990s. Definitely deserves a spot in this list and um, is definitely worth it if you want to pick it up as a collectible, I think. But this book is getting quite expensive, so if you still can get a deal on this book, I definitely would encourage you to look very hard for one. Batman number 497. This is the famous Breaking of the Bat issue where Bane is portrayed on the cover of this comic, Breaking Batman's Back. Was this a gimmick? Yes. Was it a good gimmick? I think so. Not only did it sell well, but the story was really, really good. I, I love the Batman Nightfall runs. It is one of my all-time favorite Batman runs. And if you have not read it, you absolutely need to. It is really, really good. Like I said, Batman is one of those characters that even in the 90s stayed consistently good. And we are now down to our top three. Coming in, in our number three spot, we have Spider-Man number one. This is not the Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is the first self-titled Spider-Man book. This is by Todd McFarlane. It's Todd McFarlane art and it's Todd McFarlane writing. I have to say the uh, first few issues of this book, not the greatest read. I think I think the first arc dealt with the lizard. It was, it was kind of weird. The art was kind of cool, but um, the, the story was just kind of weird. But um, following story arcs by Todd McFarlane were a little better. And he, like I said, he does start to come into his own as a writer. Um, with, with this series for sure. That being said, although Spider-Man number one is not the greatest book, this was a super, super popular book. Uh, there was a lot of hype around this book uh, in the early 1990s and it mainly was because Todd McFarlane was working on this book and Tar Todd McFarlane is a superstar artist from the 1990s. This book here is another really hot selling book. It is estimated, I believe that uh, about uh, 3 million copies of this book were sold again I say sold. In our number two spot, we have, you probably guessed it, X-Men number one, and this is the Jim Lee X-Men. Uh, this book is another one of the hottest books from the 1990s. Honestly, no 1990s comic book collection is complete without Spider-Man number one, the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man, X-Men number one here, X-Force number one, uh, that Batman book that, you know, there's just so many. These are just essentials for any 1990s comic book collection. This book here also happens to hold the record for the best selling single issue of a comic book ever. It is estimated that approximately 8 million copies of this book were, again, sold. Uh, and, and again, I say that with quotation marks because if you go to any comic book store 
in present day that was around back in the 1990s. I'm sure back in their stock room, they still have a huge stack of these books. These books are a dime a dozen. They are not very, very expensive. If you want to add one to your collection, you can do so very, very cheaply, but I definitely would not spend more than a dollar on this book. In fact, you probably can pick it up in a bargain bin because these things are just everywhere. Now, just because this issue is worthless as a collectible does not mean that it is not good. Spider-Man number one was not the greatest. X-Force number one was definitely terrible, but this one here, this hyped about comic is actually really good. The Jim Lee X-Men from the 1990s is one of my favorite comic book runs from the 1990s. It is really, really well written. And it's mostly because Jim Lee wasn't writing it. It was Chris Claremont, who is a legendary X-Men writer, and I think that's why it is such a good book, but it is definitely awesome. Pick up the first five, 10, 20 issues. You won't be disappointed. Before we get to our number one book, I would just like to ask you all that if you are enjoying this video and you do enjoy videos like this, please consider subscribing and also leave a like. It really, really helps me out and it helps the channel to continue growing. Also, check out the channel for other great videos on topics related to geek culture. And finally, in our number one spot, I'm sure you guessed it, is the death of Superman. Superman number 75. Anybody that was reading or collecting comic books in the 1990s will remember this event. Anybody who was even alive and wasn't even necessarily reading comic books will probably remember this event. This comic book was just so hot. It exploded in popularity. When people heard that the very first superhero of all time was going to die, they actually believed that he was going to die and he was going to stay dead. And if they owned this comic book, they would have the very last Superman comic book, which also would be worth lots of money. People were in a frenzy around this book. Comic book store owners that were around during this time and were doing business in this time couldn't believe it because when this book launched, they actually had lineups of people trying to get into the store to get their copy. And there were people buying two, three, four copies because they thought they were going to get super rich off these books. But the problem is the market was so saturated with this book that when people tried to sell them or get rid of them, they were getting maybe a couple bucks for them. It also was a huge pop cultural phenomenon that was happening at this time with this book. Whether they remember it as a gimmick or some huge event or the event that even got them into comic books to begin with, it will be remembered. I know the death of Superman has a very notorious reputation and it is often looked over by collectors because collect a lot of collectors don't want to pay it any attention because they feel that the death of Superman is the embodiment of everything that was wrong with the comic book industry in the 1990s and they look at it as just this huge gimmick. But at the end of the day, it definitely deserves the number one spot because it was just so huge and got so much attention. Also, I have to say, I've read this run and I actually really enjoy it. The Death of Superman is a good read. I, I really like The Death of Superman. And um, especially, I, I also liked reading the stories that follow The Death of Superman that show what the world without Superman would look like. And it was actually really sad. I have to admit there were some tear jerking moments in the death of Superman and even some of the stories that followed. At the end of the day, if you've never read the death of Superman or you're new to comic book collecting, I would ask you to just ignore everything you've heard about it and just give it a try because I'm sure you probably will enjoy it. I know I did. So that about does it for our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Are there any comic books that you feel should have been on this list that didn't appear? Please let me know in the comments. I always love hearing from you all and starting discussions. Also today, I'm going to ask you to help me out a little bit just because I always say that this is the channel that talks about comic books and other geek stuff. I really would like to start diving into other geek stuff a little bit more and talking about something like video games. Video games is something that I also enjoy along with comic books. Now, I'm not saying I want to make videos of me playing video games. No, not, nothing like that. I'm actually a very casual gamer, but I've always looked at video games in the same way that I look at comic books, and that is with a cultural eye. And I love to examine cultural impact that video games have on pop culture as a whole. Would you be interested in videos like that? Would you be interested in gaming theory? I'm a huge Nintendo fan. I love The Legend of Zelda. Would you be interested in that kind of stuff? Please let me know in the comments. 
Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.